Welcome to the fourth edition of All Killer No Filler podcast with me, Rachel Fairburn and Kiri pritchard McLean. Today's episode, we are talking about Elizabeth Bartery, the Countess of Blood. And we must stress before we do start talking about today's serial killer, we're not doing this podcast because we admire serial killers or we don't glorify them. We just have a, a mutual interest in them. And as long as we're doing this podcast, to be fair, it, you know, it's stopping us from writing to them in prison. So I think we decided that we wanted to do a chick, didn't we? Yeah. Because I know this is only the fourth one, but I mean, as a feminist, <laughs> I thought we should discuss a female serial. I think, I'm working on a little theory, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> I think that serial killers and comedians are quite similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an antisocial lifestyle that you're fondly never going to understand. Lots of late nights, lots of, I imagine the money that you have to output to get any notoriety is exactly the yeah, same kind of definitely the answer. amount of money you spend on bin line <laughs> probably astonishing uh, and how much time you spend in, in dubious B&Bs yeah. as well and I think that they're similar as well in the you never just say oh serial killer Elizabeth Bathory you would say female serial killer yeah and it's exactly the same you never say oh comedian Rachel Fairburn it's female comedian yeah well it's Rachel like when, when they always have for uh, we need recommendations for female comedians for this gig female comedians as well oh list. comedians i hate that term it's, it's so isn't it? it's what so year like is it? 50s isn't yeah. it she's a comedian <laughs> and then she gets her boobs out at the end <laughs> it's just ugh. but yes it's female serial killer and i think the ratio is probably similar as well isn't it about 10 serial killers to one female yeah. serial killer which i think is about the same in comedy as well but you know what when the women do it they really do it fucking well they just like comedy it. exactly i think they commit to it don't they she's the Elizabeth Bathory, most prolific serial killer in history yeah not alleged just alleged not just female serial killer alleged most prolific serial killer in even history. more than the beast of bolivia or harold shipman who are coming in at about 300 but um, Elizabeth Bathory is meant to have killed up to 650. Now, here's the sort of problem that we've had with her in that because it was in sort of like the 16th century, it's really hard to figure out what is fact and fiction. Yeah. And because it was such a shocking case, they've buried a lot of it. So we're going to try and present what we think are the facts in this uh, rather than just going, yeah, uh, yeah she, put, she was a leather in that, <laughs> which actually does rear its head. But <laughs> we're going to try and keep it to the facts. So we're going to start by talking about her upbringing. She was born in 1560. Put it into some kind of historical context. It was a really violent, bloody time, yeah. wasn't it? A lot of wars going. She was Hungarian. There was a war between the Hungarians and the Turks going on. Basically, everyone was kicking off in yeah. those days. So the Ottomans and the Hungarians were at war but also the serfs as they were known who were slovakian i think um who were sort of the lower classes were also at no- war with the noble people as basically everyone was fighting and she was brought up around a lot of violence she was pregnant by the time she was 13 she's said to be very beautiful mm-hmm. this is a lot of the thing obviously we can't prove that because who is going to say to the richest woman possibly in the world at the time yeah oh mate could do something with your hair, love. You know, I'm not going to... Just run your fingers through it. <laughs> yeah, so she was pregnant at the age of 13, which was fairly shocking in those days, but still not shocking if you consider the climate of, of kind of... They were basically hedonists, I think, yeah. that kind of era. I think the fact that they knew they weren't going to live very long... I think a lot of factors in the old or medieval times, especially if you're rich, if you knew you weren't you get pregnant at 13, that's probably the equivalent of being 25 yeah. in those days because the lifespan was just... yeah that's true i'd not thought about it like that i suppose it's like the war as well isn't it my mum was telling me about in the second world war my grandma was saying because no one knew if anyone was going to live from day to day so the guys would come home from fighting abroad and they'd be like oh we've got a black baby have we and we're like yep yeah, let's just <laughs> come on i didn't think yeah. you were ever going to come back keep your chin up stiff up a lip and all that <laughs> stiff up or something <laughs> yeah so yeah, she's pregnant at 13. By, uh, a pez- by one of the peasants as well. Yeah. Apparently. Which will go up. Yeah. And then the baby was apparently given away to a peasant family to bring up. So it was taken off her because they couldn't have a peasant baby in the family. So she was married to her own cousin because mm-hmm. they were big on inbreeding. Oh, keeping that line pure. <laughs> uh, she was, yeah, she married a cousin at 15. So you're pregnant at 13, married at 15, which is like a country and western song. They got her to marry yeah, what was in bloodline her cousin so they could make a really strong empire Mm -hmm. because he she was rich already but he was really rich and he gave her a castle when they got married which is one of the ones that she spent most of her time in yeah so she got this massive estate then well i was listening to a documentary and they said uh they oh they were like the posh and becks (laughs) 
of the day, which is, I don't know if they're trying to imply that Posh and Bex are sacrificing young girls to keep their youth. Although you never know. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past I it. wouldn't put it past it. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, maybe it's start with Rebecca Lewis. Yeah, he does look very smug though, David Beckham. So. He does, yeah, he does. He look looks like a man who's getting away with it. <laughs> He's getting away with something, yeah, isn't definitely. it? Definitely. <laughs> She was a descendant of Vlad the Impaler, which is uh, obviously what um, inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. And also, battery means brave. It's like the Hungarian word for brave. So she's from this like great line of sort of people who are amazing in battle, but also apparently had a really horrible mean streak. So when just kill people, they were sort of into torture. That was re- that was basically normality for her because some of the things that she saw when she was a kid are pretty brutal. One of the tortures that they gave to someone was dying horse, and they sewed the man into the dying horse with just his head exposed yeah. and that was his that was and his and then death. they left the horse and him to and die and they left them both to die which is I mean to see oh. that as a young person apparently she was laughing sort of like in a maniacal way Ooh. when it was happening which just says to me or oh, so alarm it like, but then I suppose if you're sewing people into dead horses you're like oh, she's a bit weird she's really enjoying this she's like that's my girl yeah <laughs> That's the spirit. But I mean, suppose being brought up around such so much war and torture when it's considered normal, that, I mean, now that there's a horse involved, it, maybe it was quite a novel thing to see. Like, oh, that makes a change from the rat. Like you say, this kind of, like, ultra-violent community, really weird, tor- torture's normal, and horrible things like this dead horse thing. Maybe it's like she just didn't... Maybe she had no barometer of what's right and wrong. You know, like when you go to university and there's someone who puts bread in the fridge and you're like, <laughs> what are you doing that for? And they're like, well, we always do it at home. You're like, that is really weird. It's just cold bread. Stops it going... No, it doesn't stop it going off. You've just it's... made it cold. Yeah, you've yeah. just made it cold and you've taken up half a shelf. So I, th- I think it might be that. Also, she had... Um, so you, basically, you get a, a violent childhood. She used to have fits and seizures. So I think there's some frontal lobe yeah. damage going on. And apparently that ran in the family as well, didn't it? A lot of them were prone to fits and sort of seizures and things and... Fits of anger. Yeah, she had fits of rage, didn't she? Loads of inbreeding going on. Also, she's... Because apparently she was really, like, sexually active in that she used to just... She's very beautiful, very powerful, wander around the village and be like, you, have sex with me now. Even from the age of, like, 13, she was like that. So she's probably syphilitic as well. Oh, probably, How do you not get a murderer out of all those things? Just have that power, though. She's... I think she's kind of the, the most dangerous kind of person. A sexual sadist with power. Mm. That... Is. Yeah, because when they're just in their, like, one-bedroom flat in Mile End in London, you know, like, choking themselves yeah, and masturbating in front of that, the 10 o'clock news, they're just keeping themselves to themselves. But when it's like, I've got the power to just kill and maim people as and when I want, yeah. that's when it's like, oh, no. Well, it's like a bit like Jimmy Savile, isn't it? You know, oh, I want to do this. Nobody's going to stop me. Yeah. I can get away with anything. Maybe she worked for the BBC as well. Probably, yeah. A pervert with power. <laughs> Well, it was her husband that got her into torturing. He he was like, I don't know if it was on their honeymoon or whatever, but he started to teach her. And then it was sort of like the teacher becomes the master because she had a real flair for it. Yeah, she she really took to it. Once she was shown how to do it, that was it. It was her. She was well into the old torture. One of her uncles was a instructor in Satanism. Her auntie was into sadomasochism and taught her all about sadomasochism. And she was an out lesbian as well, wasn't she? Which is quite... I mean, it sounds quite unusual, but it sounds like they were just doing whatever they wanted then. I mean, obviously, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I'm all for gay pride. But yeah, she had an auntie who was, I think the phrase who used that I read was notorious lesbian. Notorious lesbian. (laughs) I think that's a rapper, Elizabeth's auntie. Yeah, so she taught her sadomasochism. She got really into it. I think it's just a case of so many mad people with so much power, nobody's doing anything. Mm. And to them, obviously, it was quite normal. Just been... She had an uncle who was an instructor in Satanism and an auntie who was uh, into sadomasochism and taught her all about that. I can't relate to the battery at all because, like, my uncle was a driving instructor and the only thing my auntie has ever, like, taught me is, like, don't trust men whose eyebrows meet in the middle. <laughs> and if you look at my catalogue of exes, I've clearly not listened to her. <laughs> Some of the theories as well about why she tortured because they said um, it's because she was she was gay and couldn't deal with it because she used to sort of like burn their genitals with candle it was always usually focused around mm. sort of sexual organs I, that doesn't stack up to me at all because if she had a, an, a lesbian auntie that was sort of like her mentor 
you wouldn't be like, oh, I can't possibly be gay. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, stand it up. doesn't ring true to me that either because she she was in a position where she could do what she wanted. Yeah. In that position, she could do what she wanted. I mean, she had a husband as well, and she also had four or five children. Yeah. I think wasn't it? She would just have got on with it and done as she pleased. Well, yeah, because she did whatever she wanted in every other respect. So why would you say? Yeah. That? So she was a sadomasochist and at least bisexual. Mm-hmm. She was massively into torture. She sounds like a right fucking laugh, to be honest. She's Without a doubt, yeah. She sounds like someone who you probably wouldn't go on holiday with, but you'd have a really good, like a hen night would be fucking <laughs> brilliant with her. You'd wake up with a new tattoo and probably missing a toenail. Yeah. You'd be like, oh God, I love it when Liz oh, comes out. Going out with Lizzie tonight. <laughs> oh, blimey. Yeah, yeah, I've got flat shoes, just in case. <laughs> she had this massive, massive empire. So big that the king at the time owed her money. That's how powerful her family was. And when her um, husband went away to war to fight, which he frequently did, and was known for being really brutal mm. on the battlefield, she used to just run the whole empire. I, I was, was watching a documentary where someone said she was an unusually intelligent woman for the time, which I don't think is the right phrase. I think that means she was unusually educated. It wasn't like, yeah. isn't it mad when a woman's <laughs> clever? Yeah, but she spoke loads of different languages. She would take... See, there's, there's a few things that I think, hmm, is that... Are we getting to know the real her? Because apparently she, there was a woman whose daughter was raped and she sort of helped her out and helped it get to the courts and would defend women. It tended to be noble women that she took an interest yeah. in, but she would defend them and help them with their affairs if her husband died and things. Yeah, see, that's quite interesting. The fact that she ran, this huge, ran the huge empire that she had while her husband was away, taking control of everything. Back in the 1500s, 1600s, that's a massive thing for a woman to do yeah. back then. And it does make you think, is everything else surrounding her crap, basically? Yeah. And it apparently she was a very good mother as well. Yeah, it, doting mother, I think the phrase yeah. was. So I don't know, there are some things that seem to be in an almost exact yeah. opposite to the the picture that's painted of her so how it came to trial how all these uh, horrific crimes came out is she used to kill peasant girls and then she ran out of those even though there was 17 villages surrounding her castle that she owned and then she moved on to noble women because it was noble women they couldn't ignore it anymore so they set up a task force which the king sent and basically these guys sort of descended on the castle and so it was horrific Mm. said it smelt like an abattoir which is such a graphic description isn't it Lizzie your castle stinks oh mate Um, but then people can't smell their own houses so we shouldn't judge her too harshly should we and it actually, I bet I smell of dog all the time and I've got no idea. Well, I can't smell it. I've got a terrible sense of smell, actually. But saying, like, you know, people can't smell their own houses, it sounds like something your mum would say if, if you've been cheated on. <laughs> oh, come on, Rachel. You know what it's like? People can't smell their own houses. <laughs> it does sound like yeah, it. Yeah, it does sound like it. should be on a fridge magnet. <laughs> Always remember, you can't smell your own ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they went to this the castle. Dogs running around. There was with, dogs, yeah, yeah, running around with bits of girl in Ooh. their mouth. There was all sort of shallow graves, so the dog would dig them up and eat them. Ugh. There was a girl who was sort of half burnt who then died of her injuries later. There was another girl who's in the a process of being tortured. Yeah, so this is allegedly they turn up at this castle. One, it stinks. Two, there's dogs running around with bits in the gob. And then allegedly they go into like the torture part of the castle and Lizzie's there actually torturing a girl. Mid torture. It just seems like it's a really sort of shit sitcom, doesn't it? <laughs> that they walk in and she'd just turn around covered in blood and just shrug and they'd all go, That's Lizzie. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see that on Nickelodeon. I'd like to see that on Nickelodeon. I don't know why well. they're picking on it, because they went into her house and announced, like, the British gaff came over, a guy came over yesterday. I was in the bath. I'm going to get it straight back in my bath when he carries on, because it's like, it's my house, I'll do what yeah, I want. Yeah, like. you know, they, they didn't turn up and announced. There was no warning. If there had been warning, maybe she could have hid the bodies and, you know, done a quick dust round. Yeah, exactly. Done a bit of shake and vac yeah. and burned some incense. It started a massive trial. They, they had 300 witness statements. Although, said witness statements... <laughs> We don't know how reliable they are. The statements they took, most of the people couldn't read or write. Well, because what they would do is they'd go, they'd write down their statements as they said them and they go, does this look right to you? And then they'd look at what probably to them looked like hieroglyphs and were like, yeah, that's fine. That'll and do. most of them were signed with an X because they, did, they didn't have a signature. So they just had to make a mark on the paper. So I, I, we don't really know how much of that is true. But, but they did interview her accomplices because she had like a team of torturers. Yeah. 
And what a team they were. There was a witch, a dwarf, and a servant. <laughs> Walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> and kill a load of women. So they have this elderly, sort of very dark black magic witch from the village. It was a deformed dwarf called Fisgo. Fisgo. I love that name. I like that name. Uh, it's a great, it's a dog's name, isn't yeah. it? Fisgo. <laughs> Fisgo. And, and then the serving woman. And they would assist her in her torturing. The authorities then tortured them to get them to give evidence. Because at the time, it was deemed that any evidence or, or statements got under torture were more reliable mm. than those that were just given uh, that were volunteered and that is the most perverse logic I've ever heard yeah one of the evidence things that they gave it was one of the actual tortures Elizabeth and her um, cohort did was apparently one of them they put a woman in a cage with spikes in it they would all stand around watching Fizgo the dwarf would shout sexual obscenities at her as somebody just prodded her to death with a spear standard I have to say like re- when I read that I thought you know I've had some bad dreams <laughs> but it's like something you would be in bed at night you'd be dreaming it and you wake up and you go, well, that was weird. I wonder what the dwarf means. <laughs> Does it mean I'm going to travel? It's like really sort of a strange scenario. <laughs> As if, like, it couldn't be terrifying enough, but just to look round and there's a witch. It's like a cannibal corpse dwarf. music video. Or Marilyn Manson. Completely bizarre. Bring in the dwarves. <laughs> At the end of the trial, they killed they killed her accomplices, but not her. So the women, apparently, they cut their fingers off with red hot Ooh. pincers, which just sounds horrendous. Yeah. And then they threw them on a fire, and then Fisgo, they disemboweled him, and I think they burned him afterwards. It sort of sounds like the kind of stuff that they were accused of doing to other people, but mm. now there's just a, a judge involved in it so yeah but it sounds exactly the kind of thing Elizabeth would have really enjoyed yeah she probably I mean if they let her watch that would have been perfect yeah. she probably would have got off to that <laughs> so here are some of the things this is pretty strong stuff so get ready if you've just eaten give it, yeah. give it half an hour I wouldn't yeah <laughs> so these are some of the things that she's said to have done so she meant to have killed 650 girls they're only prosecuted for 38 of those now things that she's meant to have done burnt genitals with a candle made torture devices so the one that you described that was like a Cage. Yeah. There's cages as well that would, they would hoist up and then knives would come out the sides and there'd be knives in the ceiling and what would they do is one of them would swing the cage so when they tried to move out of the way of the knives Ooh. they would swing into another one and they'd just sort of hang there. They'd, oh, this is one of the ones she used to do with her husband was stick pins under fingernails and toenails and burn between the toes which sounds like, although it's not the most like gruesome, Ooh. it just sounds like the most painful, doesn't it? We've all yeah. got a splinter under your nail. That really, yeah, makes you wince that one. You used to cut the fingers off of maids that were disobeyed or did something wrong. Oh, the cold water death mm. is some of the worst ones. So they'd send a girl outside and then it, and strip her naked and then throw cold water over her again and again and again until it froze over her. You know, like Guy from The Shining. What Apparently, one of the serving girls did something wrong and she flew into one of her rages and she grabbed her jaw and pulled it open, <sighs> just like pulled the jaw off, which is just one of the worst mad, things I've ever it? heard. Even... It's not it even... It takes some strength to do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. She's yeah. She must have been doing at least press ups every morning. Definitely. I, I kind of think it's more visceral than when someone shoot like the Zodiac killer shoots people. Yeah, and you're like that's a stepping or, or even stab someone. But to physically take your hands on somebody's jaw. Well, the other one as well is that she was because they the thing if she was six hundred fifty, she killed about seventeen people every year. She was really sick in bed and uh, she couldn't go down and torture. So they ordered for a serving girl to be brought up to her, and uh, they brought this girl up, and then she just sat up in bed and then apparently bit her neck and then was taking chunks out of her neck and her breasts which is like bleh, the strength to the do strength that to do it, yeah. sometimes I struggle with halloumi <laughs> let alone <laughs> let alone a serving girl and especially in those days when I always think people's teeth were rancid yeah. back in the 15s I she was just but... gumming it yeah that's what concerns me I always imagine she'd be biting it a bit so the teeth would be crumbling out oh god it's just horrible isn't it yeah I had a reason once you know the chocolate cheese oh yeah chocolate <laughs> lost a molar to one of them <laughs> it's so sad it's so so sad to read about all these girls because they just had no way of no one would believe them and, and no one would do anything because they're peasant girls and, and ultimately I don't think anyone cared at the time I yeah. think it was a bit like oh well you know. well actually there was a, the one of the local like vicars wrote a letter to her saying you need to stop doing it and he was considered very brave because he said it's beyond because torture and well bad treatment of serfs was normal but at, like explicit sadomasochistic torture wasn't and he was like come on you can knock them about a bit but can we stop cutting their fingers yeah, off, please. just can you keep him in one piece? Yeah, so he already put his head above put his head above the parapet with her and was considered very brave. But it just seems incredibly sad that these girls would just go, oh well that's another one gone then. They could recognise her carriage going through the villages at night with 
the with the two black horses and they they would try and hide the girls but she just yeah she ran out of them in the end and i just think with those 650 girls you know when they do what's it called hypnotherapy and they take people back in time and they're always like regression yeah that's, that's it, it regression yeah. isn't it so like what can you see um i can see a pyramid i am cleopatra there's something like <laughs> one in like every 60 people will say that they were cleopatra in a previous life if it was anywhere near accurate i think that we would all probably be a murdered peasant or well, 650 of us certainly yeah. would be like i'm getting my fanny burnt with a, a candle there's a dwarf next to me <laughs> There's a dog carrying a, yeah. a girl's <laughs> girl's arm around the place. It smells really bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think with no, in my luck, I'd definitely be a murdered peasant girl. I just think I'd be an average peasant girl. I'd be regressed, and I'd be like, yeah, it's, it's fifteen forty-two. I'm I'm seventeen. I'm now twenty, and I'm dying. Nothing happened. Just consumption. Uh, yeah, that'd be it. So she, her nickname is the Countess of Blood, mm. which is pretty fucking cool. Is, <laughs> I know. Yeah, that is a cool nickname to have in it. Uh, Rachel thought just call me the Countess of Blood. I think this is where the biggest part of the myth comes in yeah. isn't it uh, yeah apparently she was she was said to bathe in the blood of, of virgins all the girls any of the girls that she killed so, so to keep her young there is a, an instance where apparently she hit one of her maids of course she did broke her nose and the blood went on her hand and she rubbed it into her hand and she was like oh well this has rejuvenating qualities and decided from then on that she was going to use blood I'm not sure if I believe the, the maid story because if she was torturing people every day which she probably would have she was surrounded by so much blood why would it take somebody's nosebleed to just oh, yeah. just rub it in there that'll do it that'll do the trick also to bath in blood we have eight pints of blood in our body I think mm. it is isn't it how many pints of that is it, how many people have you got to drain a shit bath isn't it eight that pints. is a shit bath a horse bath it, and you just have to kill so many people and then did she warm it up I was, was it a that? cold like, bath did they, yeah, yeah cold bath in blood oh my it, god it must it have seems stunk. really yeah oh god I just I don't that's, I have to say I don't believe that bit of the story I think she probably did use bits of you know drops of the blood maybe she did rub it into her skin I don't think she ever bathed well they said that she was obsessed because she was so beautiful it was all about st- stopping the aging process wasn't it no, you, having said that maybe I can believe it because I think if you're that vain for example if somebody turned around today to, to said to Kim Kardashian oh Kim um, you know what's really good for keeping you looking young if you kill a baby um, <laughs> drain its blood and just rub it all over your face you're going to look fantastic I think she would do it but if yeah. she's not already yeah that's true yeah, she's like I, sacrificing kids already I think people would do it. I mean people put things like lambs placentas on the faces don't do they? they yeah there's that there's another blood um, facial thing that you can have where I think they prick your skin so you bleed and then they rub the skin over the, the blood over your face there's pictures of it on there's some beauty website I was looking at on it's on there I'm sorry that's just grim that's oh not... god why are people so fucking stupid I don't know vanity is yeah. grim isn't it I, I, I think this whole bathing in blood thing is bullshit as well because one of the witness statements one of the incorrect witness statements said that, that when she used to torture sometimes there was so much blood and the people she was torturing that they would have to scoop it out by the pail who was that precious blood you wouldn't just be like oh I'll just let it go all over the floor you would have stuff that you'd, would decapture it yeah you'd be it? draining somebody and you know getting the bucket and making sure people kept it yeah you know, thing put it straight in the bath I've had a oh, long be day. Right. you'd have a system going wouldn't yeah, you yeah you'd have a system so I think, I do think that that's a myth. I think it comes from something. Oh, do you think there's a seed of something? I think there? there's something. I think maybe she did rub a bit of blood on her face at times. Or, or maybe she executed when she was killing people and torturing them. Maybe she was covered in so much blood. They were like, oh, she's been bathing in it. Yeah. She's covered in it. Maybe Always it was... to rub it on her face because she's batshit enough to do stuff like oh, that. Oh, of course. She? Yeah, definitely. She's at least rubbed it in her face. <laughs> at least. <laughs> right, I'm just saying at the very least... <laughs> She's rubbed it in her face. <laughs> there is an alternate and ever-growing popular movement amongst, it is particularly um, sort of Hungarian academics, who think that she was misunderstood. And they think that she was massively fucking stitched up. Because one of the things is, the king who she owed money to, who ordered the trial in the first place, he knew that if she got prosecuted, her estate would automatically go to the crown. Ah. So they were like, oh, well, that's not very fair because mm. he's got motive there. Because his for a start, his debt would be written off and he would inherit all of her lands and therefore legitimately make him the most powerful person as opposed to just the king. So there are more and more people who think that she was actually a doctor uh, or that she was performing abortions for the local girls that needed them. and that Because that's one of the things that she said. She asked the court to give mercy and she said, I was just helping them. She said that the servant girls were frequently diseased frequently injured 
and that she was just helping them. One of the guys I saw an interview with on a documentary, he he shows a guy, he went, look at this, what does that look like? And the guy's like, yeah, like a torture instrument. He's like, no, not so. This is actually for heating up and then cauterizing wounds. And that was one of the things that was found in her castle. And it's like, how does it make sense? That's still just because it can be used for medicine. Scalpels can be used in medicine as well. That doesn't mean anyone using a scalpel is a hero. And that is just one of the things. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, yeah. Just one of them. (laughs) What about the cage covered in? Nice. Not, oh, that's for getting rid of warts. You've not seen the hacksaw that she cut people's legs off with and then <laughs> used the tool to cauterise the stump. Do you know what I mean? It's it's so frustrating because you've got no way of knowing, have you? Because it's so long after everything. We're never going to know the truth about it. There is something was going on. I don't think she was helping them. I mean, performing abortions. Yeah, that's... I, I, don't, I don't believe that she was, like, getting this, getting this spiky cage while we get rid of that unwanted baby. Yeah. Well, maybe she hoped the stress would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Send in the dwarf. Just make her, make them wear high heels and drink loads of gin instead. <laughs> that's what the Victorians did. But, I no, I can't believe... I mean, part of me wants to believe that she's, like, this amazingly powerful woman that loads of, like, guys feel threatened by and then go let's stitch her up mm. and that they they then because like that to me is almost more romantic and heroic but i really don't believe with all the fucked up shit like uh, to a certain extent there's no smoke without fire and all the weird shit that she was doing I don't think she was bathing in blood but i no. do think that she was fucking bonkers and she was torturing people yeah and I, I think to go oh no she was um when you put f- uh pins under people's fingernails what you're actually doing is testing their reflexes yeah. it's like no it's, i don't buy that at all it's to ward off evil spirit I don't buy that. And I think the jaw thing as well. If that's yeah. true, she's just mad. Yeah, she's, she's just completely off, off the wall. She's a crazy woman. And prolific as well, because as I said, she, she ran out of peasants. And this is the thing, while she was killing peasants, no one, A, gave a shit, and B, could who gave a shit, could do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Because of this whole uh, fight between the noble people and the serfs, they were terrified about doing anything that would upset the noble people in case they slaughtered them again. So they mm. would just let them take their girls. And But she just ran out of them. So what she did was she set up a boarding school. She, well, she set up like a finishing school in her castle and said to the noble people, oh, if you want me to teach your girl how to be a lady, I'm fucking she's the least ladylike person in the world, then send them to my school. And they're like, yeah, brilliant. And they'd send them there. And obviously they'd be like, oh... She fell out of the window. I'm really sorry uh, about that. Quite aptly named the finishing school. <laughs> you send your daughters to me and I'll uh, I'll finish them for you. But once the noble women started... Um, that's when people started yeah, getting Yeah, that's when people started getting a bit... Hold on a minute. That's the thing that makes me um, hate boarding schools even more. That story. But again, like I feel dubious there because everyone must have known what was going on in the castle. Like oh, There must have been rumours at least. So why knowing that and knowing what all these girls have got to be like... Isn't it funny that there's only lads here, like, wandering around modern-day China, like, oh, there's not many yeah. girls, are there? I wonder why that is. Must be a coincidence that, that you wouldn't then go, yeah, I probably will send my only daughter to her castle and just hope that she comes back. I mean, unless the, the fact that she was just so powerful, they would be like, maybe they, there was no choice. Maybe it was like, you have to send your daughters here. You don't know. You send them oh, here right, or so this like, will happen. Make an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, you, you don't know, do you? Because she would be so frightened of upsetting her. Or getting on the wrong side of it. She was the most powerful person around. Maybe it was just like, off you go to finishing school. I suppose you can't refuse her because there was that soprano, wasn't there? Oh my God, yeah. The, she saw a soprano singing in one of the churches. And she was so impressed by it. She thought she, thought she was brilliant. She invited her to her castle to give her a personal performance. The poor woman was so nervous because she was performing it in front of all these important people. Uh, that Elizabeth, she, she sang really badly. And Elizabeth Bathory decided she flew into a rage and uh, had her killed. Yeah, she tortured her as well. And she was a noble woman, this soprano. Yeah. And that's when they think, like, it started to, it just got so bad they couldn't ignore it. And that is a bad gig as well. <laughs> and we've like, all died ooh. on stage, haven't we? <laughs> uh, at least, give it an hour and you feel a bit better, but that is, that is a really bad gig. At least when I tank somewhere, I then don't, like, I, I'm not, my life isn't threatened. Yeah. Like, if I have a ropey one, I just... I self-flagellate my car all the way back. I don't actually get... And then, oh, you might just get a burger on the way home <laughs> and go, oh, I feel a bit better now. Everything's all right. At least it's not the fear of actual death. So how they punished her was... Because they, they couldn't kill her. They She never gave evidence at the trial as well because that's one of the people, the people that defend her mm-hmm. use that as an example of going, well, we never heard what she had to say. She was never able to defend herself. So how they punished her was they couldn't kill her 
because her apparently the, all the noble people rallied around mm-hmm. all the batteries and said, uh, "No, you're not killing it." So what they did is they got a few rooms in her castle and they bricked her up inside them. She was fifty at the time, and they they bricked her up inside and kept her in like the same four rooms, and they would have slits for air and to push food through and then she died like four years later i have to say that is not punishment to me that sounds like luxury (laughs) heaven bring me up in a room in my own house just have a slip for food netflix i'm happy i don't have to see anyone i don't have to speak to anyone I'm fine. All right, I'm surrounded by my own feces. <laughs> and I'm covered in piss. You don't, maybe there was a slip for that. A slip for shit. Yeah, a slip for <laughs> a shit, shit slip. slip. <laughs> Be more than happy to see out the rest of my days just walled up in a room in my house. Is that your is that your dream scenario? That, that is my dream. I'm like, I want to live in a country house with loads of rescue dogs and foster children. And you're like, just fucking break me off and bring me up. Leave, leave me a slip for food. <laughs> and a slip for shit. <laughs> and I am happy, yeah. <laughs> Four years of, of heaven she had there. Four years of, of solitary heaven. Oh, I, th- I think it sounds horrendous. And also she... Because, I mean, what if she was innocent and you just bricked yeah, up and forgotten about? Up. Because this is the thing. They don't actually know when she died because when they... One of the guards eventually looked through one of the slits and saw that she was dead and surrounded by plates of uneaten food. So she she must have been there a couple, at least a couple of days. That means that no one was really checking on her. Yeah. They were just pushing the food through. It's like, you know, when you're little and there's that spare room in your house you're frightened of, and your dad's like, <laughs> go and put them pillows away or whatever, and you just, like, run to the door and throw it in and then shut the Stop door. Because the like, that's, that's where Dracula lives. <laughs> just me. I wonder why I'm into serial killers. I just think it's really, really sad. Especially when you don't know. You, like I say, she could very well have been innocent. They could just have been very intimidated by her power. And the fact that she was running all these, you know, this this kingdom with all these, and had all this money, and the king owed her money, which is quite an important thing that we need to remember. It is sad. It is. It's sad in every respect because it's sad that girls were dying, whether they were, whether she was legitimately a doctor, and they were dying of bodged medical procedures and tuberculosis and everything else, and cholera and syphilis and everything else that was knocking around back then, or whether they were tortured, which is horrendous mm. to think of. There's no good outcome in this story. It's just incredibly sad. If, if the, only they would have taken photographs at the crime scene. Oh God, yeah. I could Google them <laughs> to my heart's content. Not very good with crime scene photos, you know. Oh no, I'm not. I, I don't ever Google. No, I think if you Google in crime scene photos, you're a bit grubber. Yeah, do you think yeah, so? Yeah, I think you're grubber. You're in it for the wrong reasons, and you, you, glory hunter. Yeah, you're going to be in for a nasty surprise if you never, ever Google crime scene photographs. In fact, I'm not really sure why they're allowed on the internet anyway. I don't know why they're allowed. It's really easy to find pictures of dead people. I found this out. So I was reading someone's tweet, someone like lefty, like Owen Jones, and then do you ever read that and then you read the replies by mistake and you just yeah, get into yeah. it? So I found some guy called, like, Pistol Rules, and I clicked on him, and he's, like, a pro-UKIP guy who thinks that guns should be brought back to the UK, That would stop, which is just such a fucking baffling... That's one of the things we've got right, yeah. is, like, no guns, thank you. Yeah. And that's... he's like, yeah, no, that we shouldn't have to licence them, let's just bring them back. And he... Give everyone a gun. Well, one of the things was, the pictures that he had, uh, he had used was, like... Basically, it was a guy in South Africa who tried to carjack someone and the back of his head was completely blown Ooh. away and I can't unsee that now. And he was like, another oh, no, carjacker brought to justice because he because the guy had a gun. It's like, yeah, but the carjacker had a gun as well. The reason why everyone has guns is because someone had them in the first place. Yeah, it's just like when people put awful pictures on, and I, can't, I don't even remember what context this was in, of Mexican drug dealers who'd been beheaded. Why are you putting that on Facebook or Twitter? I... I can read something and ascertain that something's horrific. I don't need to see that picture on Twitter. In the right context, maybe in a, a textbook about that thing. Mm. And people just Google them and it's like people who watch videos of beheadings. What is wrong with you? Anyway, we've gone right off topic here. We digress. Oh. So that is Elizabeth Battery. She's the most prolific serial killer. She's also a lady. I don't know what to believe. I don't believe she was a doctor. I definitely don't believe she was a doctor. I think a lot of it's been embellished. I don't think she bathed in blood. No. I don't think that she maybe did half the things that they they say she... I wouldn't be surprised if what she did wasn't much more unusual than shit that was going on anyway. Yeah. But she was a, a figurehead for it to go, right, well, we're going to go after you because you're a very powerful woman. But again, that is my uh, like love of feminist yeah. conspiracy theory, me. So next week we decided to do a couple, didn't we? We did, yes. So we're going to do Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Who I don't know much about. Oh. But I know that they're local. Yeah, Gorton. Gorton, yeah. Moore's Murders. So it'll be an interesting one. 
because I think it's a case that a lot of people know about. Except no. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird that I don't know about it, isn't it? I know I look like her when I dyed my hair blonde and I had roots, but I don't know much about the murders. So we're going to be talking about that next time on All Colour, No Filler. I just want to say while we're here, lots of people have said that they really like our theme tune. I'd like to thank Will Duggan. Thank That's you, Will. Will Duggan on Twitter for composing that. And he just sort of bashed it out. That makes it sound like he masturbated. Um, I'm sure Will's bashed it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did actually record. There's a picture on the Twitter. He recorded it with his top off. Well, he has to no, because his uh, shirt kept making noises that the recording was picking up. So we were like, just whip your shirt off. And he did it. He didn't even go really. He just went all right. It was off, it was like off before we'd finished the sentence. So this has been the All Killer No Filler podcast with Rachel Fairman and Kerry Richard McLean. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.